hey, if you're having trouble uh, making sales or maybe you're not having any trouble making sales, but you want to be even better. Uh, in today's podcast, I want to share with you about a guy who was making a million dollars a year during the Great Depression selling life insurance. That easy enough? <laughs> How I Raised Myself from Failure to Success in Selling by Frank Betcher is one of the most influential books in my life. I, I joke that every major religion has their, their holy scriptures, right? And as a life insurance agent, this is our holy scripture. Uh, this is not a book that you should read. It is a book, a book you should study. You'll know you've gotten to the place um, where, where you've, you've done well reading this and studying this when you start hearing Frank Betcher come out of your mouth in an appointment when you're talking with a client. Um, Frank was uh, living in Philadelphia, 25% uh, unemployment rate during the Great Depression. He did not have all the fancy products like we have today, didn't have bank draft, didn't have the amazing leads like we have. Uh, he was a debit agent going by, collecting the premiums every time they were due. Uh, the leads he was working were really referrals from other clients, uh, on and on and on. Um, and uh, he he took a Dale Carnegie course, so maybe... maybe uh, uh, you've taken a Dale Carnegie course yourself, but they still they still are out there. Uh, but he took a Dale Carnegie course and it helped him. And he actually bumped into Dale Carnegie one time uh, on a train. And um, Dale Carnegie wrote the book uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, there's several books he's written, but that was one that's a, that's a big big often quoted book. Uh, but uh, Dale he was Frank was sharing with Dale Frank's story. Hey, I took your course, and here's some things that happened, and I ended up seeing this success. And Dale said, you need to write that in a book. If you go to Amazon.com and you're looking for this book, just type in his last name, Betcher, uh, as in Bet Your Life. He says that in the book. But just type that in as the author. You'll find his book. I don't think he wrote. Somebody said he wrote a second one, but I've never, never found the second one. This is the only one I've ever read. And today I want to tell you a little bit about what's in this book, hopefully enough that it will tease you into reading it. Uh, because I'm positive, absolutely positive, it'll absolutely uh, impact your life for the better. So not giving you a book report, not going to give you the titles of all the chapters. Just want to talk about three things uh, that this book taught me personally. First of all, uh, and it's, I think it's the first chapter, he talks about enthusiasm. Uh, and, and back in those days when he learned about enthusiasm, he was actually uh, a, a professional baseball player. And he was on the lowest end of the pay scale as a, as a professional baseball player. And he wanted to get into the upper scale. And um, he started just acting enthusiastic. Uh, it, it was the old saying I hear in my head is set yourself on fire and people will come from miles around to watch you burn. That's what he did. He did everything with enthusiasm, so much so that his, his coach and the other players were giving him water because they thought he was going to be so dehydrated because he was sweating so hard with all the extra effort and energy that he was, uh, that he was putting out. Uh, but what happened? What happened is his income grew by 10 times as a professional baseball player. Crazy what happened in that uh, result. Just from, just from being enthusiastic and showing a little more energy. Another chapter in his book that really appealed to me was really, uh, it, and it's, I'll, I'll tell you this, have you, have you missed a sale and afterwards talk to your mentor? It happens to me all the time where uh, a new agent goes out or an experienced agent goes out and doesn't make a sale and they ask me, can you help me figure out why I missed the sale? I say, sure. And I'll ask them, why does the client want to buy the life insurance? And uh, the, the, the agent say, well, he, Mr., wants to make sure that Mrs. is taken care of if anything happens to him. I say, great. What is he worried that's going to happen to him? I don't know. Does he have a family history of things happening to the Mr.? I don't know. What does he want to do for her exactly? I don't know. How much debt do they have? I don't know. How many more years do they have left on their mortgage? I don't know. Well, Mr. Agent, you missed the sale because you didn't find out the why. Now, you found out a why. It's a real surfacey why. But if you really want to make the sale, you've got to get to an emotional place with that why. You've got to dig down deep and find out really why. I mean, if you're asking me, uh, Fitz, why do you want to buy life insurance? Well, I want to make sure if something happens to me uh, that Heather is taken care of. Well, great. What are you worried is going to happen to you, Fitz? Well, I mean, in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking that I could end up developing a heart problem sometime. 
Heart, that's really specific. Why would you think that fits? Well, because my father passed away when he was 58 of congestive heart failure. He had diabetes and multiple bypass surgeries and stents done over the years, and, and he ended up dying way before he should have. See, see, how, see how it's more and more is coming out? And if you kept digging with questions and digging with questions, you would really understand that it's deep-rooted in me that I have to have life insurance. I bought life insurance before I had a license. I was fresh out of college and I bought life insurance. Why? Because my father died and left us without life insurance. If you're asking those questions, you dig that up and you find out that emotion, and that is going to be a sale. I learned all of that from Frank Betcher. Every word I just said, I, I totally learned the whole concept from him. And I found that when I was in a home, I would say, in addition to that, why, dot, dot, dot. And that was Frank Betcher. The last thing I'll share with you that I learned from Frank Betcher was tracking numbers. One of the things in his book that he revealed, uh, he said, and he, was, he, he wasn't somebody who necessarily needed to track numbers or, or loved numbers, but he realized that he was, um, he was spending a lot of time running appointments and not making sales. And so one of the things he started tracking was how many sales did I make on the, how many times did I make a sale on the first appointment? And then how many times did I make a sale on the second appointment? Then how many times did I make a sale on the third appointment and a fourth appointment, a fifth appointment on out? And what he realized in just tracking those numbers for just a little bit of time, what he realized was, the, uh, the first appointment was when he was making most of his sales. And it went down slightly to the second appointment was when he would make most of his sales. But then it was dramatic, uh, dramatically down on that third appointment, actually closing deals on a third appointment. And then from there, it just progressively got worse and worse and worse. He knew if it was the 10th time sitting in front of that client, he certainly was not going to close it. So what did he do with that? He stopped going to third and fourth and fifth and sixth appointments. He just, he just knew that the time invested there wasn't going to return the money he was looking for. So he focused his attention on appointment one and appointment two and closing the sales there. And then after that, just letting the lead go, letting the client go. Um, I remember a few years back, a few years back, 20 plus years ago, uh, when I first got started, I had a friend of mine, we were getting started about the same time. And I immediately smoked him in personal production until, until I didn't. And uh, I remember uh, asking him, I said, hey, with all due respect, man, I, I think I'm better at this than you, but your numbers, your results are better than mine. What do you think you're doing differently? He said, I just started tracking my numbers. I just started tracking my dials and making sure that I was actually doing the work that I thought I was doing. And uh, I said, interesting. Uh, okay, well, that's, that can't be it because I know I'm out dialing you. He said, prove it. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, show me your numbers. Show me that you've been tracking your dials. And I, I couldn't prove it. Uh, I couldn't show him anywhere where I had been tracking the dials. And, and so he said, you, I, he said, I'm willing to bet that you're not making the dials you think you're making. Okay, so I set out to prove him wrong. I sat down to make dials, and I picked up the phone, and I dialed, and I picked up the phone, and I dialed. I swear my finger was bleeding. I had been dialing so much, and I was sweating from dialing. It was like such, so labor-intensive. I just felt exhausted. I've been doing the tick marks and tick marks and tick marks. And finally, I looked down at my paper after it seemed like hours of dialing. And I had made 33 dials. 33 dials. <laughs> my buddy was making 75. I was making 33. Frank Betcher taught us to track that. And I'll tell you, towards the end of my personal production career, another thing I learned from Frank Betcher on tracking numbers, I actually got into the habit of tracking how much I was making per dial. Just by picking up the phone and making a dial, how much did I end up getting paid? And whether they said yes or no or booked an appointment or not, whether they answered or not, based on the dials, how much was I making per dial? And the way you track that is you ultimately look at how much, how many sales you got issued uh, or, or, or wrote this week and figure out what your commissions are going to be from that and then divide it by the number of dials you made this week to make those sales. When I first got started tracking it, I was making about $5 a dial, which when you're incredibly broke, just picking up the phone and making a dial and knowing that you just got deposited $5 in your account, that was motivating to me. I was fired up about it. By the time, I, and I, I looked at the numbers and, and what I wanted to make, I wanted to make $350,000 a year. That was in my mind, just a number, because 100000 seemed cool, a quarter million seemed cool. I didn't want to choose one. I just put my hands together and tried to go for both. And so 
dollars was my goal. And I thought, okay, well, let's look at how many dials I'm, how much money am I making per dial? And at the time I was making $67 per dial, whether they answered or not, whether I got a voicemail or a four-year-old or a decision maker on the phone, whether they booked an appointment or not, whether they, whether they bought or not, my commissions worked out to be $67 per dial. And so doing that math, I knew I just had to make 100 dials a week and I was going to make $350,000 a year. Got that from Frank Betcher. I hope those three things have teased you enough to pick up this book and study it. Buy it, study it, study it, study it. I hope it's done that. Uh, you can get it at Amazon.com. Anywhere you go buy books, you can get this book. Uh, but uh, I hope you've done that. Uh, I will challenge you to do that. And let me know that you've done it. Let's talk about it. Let's discuss what Frank Betcher is teaching you. And hey, as we like to say, now that you know, you know.